can't help me please don't stop me move out of my way oh lord and don't try to block me i got a race to run and i'm running by faith at the ministry line i'm gonna see god's face Don't stop me. All right, all right. Move out of my way. Oh Lord, and don't try to block me. I got a race to run. And I run it by faith. At the finish in line. I brought a sick of faith. I've been running for Jesus a long time, running both night and day. I don't have time for all the talk you may cause me to lose this way. If you can't help me, please don't stop me. Oh, Lord, no. out of my way. Oh, my Lord, and don't try to block me. I got a race to run And I run it by faith At the finish line I'm gonna see God's face Lord, give me time to run this race My heart to set by grace In a few more mountains and hills to climb He be waiting at the finish line if you can't help me, please don't stop me. Oh, my Lord, get out of my way. Oh, my Lord, don't try to stop me. I 
got a race to run. And I'm running by faith at the finishing line. I'm about to see God's face. You can't help me. Please don't stop me. Move out of my way. Oh, Lord, and don't try to block me. I got a race to run. And I run by faith at the finishing line. I see God's face. Hello, everyone. I'll be reading a poem entitled A Black Woman. Do not look into my face and see the color of my skin and not see the content of my character. Do not look into my history and see the darkness of my past and not see the brightness of my future. Do not look at the losses of my mistakes and not see the profits of my achievements. Do not look at the distance I have yet to travel and not see the origins from which I have come. Do not look at the foolishness of my youth and not see the wisdom of my older age. Do not look at the poverty of my family and not see the riches of its love. Do not look at the child I once was and not see the black woman I have become. God bless you, my brothers and sisters, and may heaven smile upon you. This is a day that the Lord hath made. We want to rejoice and be glad in it. On this third Sunday in February, Black History Month, there is a word for the women. Amen. Next next week, I think I'll do a word for the men, but this week, we're going to do a word for the women. Amen. Uh, and before we get started, we're going to ask you to you know, do all our safety requirements, uh, social distancing, uh, six feet one from another, respiratory etiquette, if you got a sneeze or cough, do so on the inside of your elbow, and hand sanitation, wash your hands often, all day, every day, and for a minimum of 20 seconds each time, and then uh, let's wear a mask indoors and outdoors. Amen. Uh, there is a word from the Lord in the book of John. Amen. The book of John, uh, the 12th chapter, verses 20 and 21. St. John, uh, the 12th chapter, verses 20 and 21. This is what it says. Some Greeks who had come to Jerusalem to attend the Passover paid a visit to Philip, who was from Bethesda in Galilee. They said, Sir, we want to meet Jesus. They said, Sir, we want to meet Jesus. Uh, we want to talk a little bit today for the women, and yet it's a word for all of us. What women want. What women want. Pray with me, if you will, my Father, my God, we ask your blessings now upon the word that shall be preached. Move, Lord, and have thine own way. Save somebody's soul, cleanse and make them whole. In the name of Jesus the Christ, we do pray. And all God's people said, Amen. Have you ever wished that your mate knew exactly what you wanted? And not only did your mate know exactly what you wanted, but they would begin to act upon it. Women often complain that men know nothing about their needs. They say it is as if, as 
the two of them lived on different planets like Venus or like Mars, one knowing very little about the other. But wouldn't it be something, my beloved, if women could run upon a man who knew exactly what they wanted, and not only would they have knowledge of what they wanted, but then they would act upon it. Mel Gibson, you recall, raised the issue of male sensitivity to the needs of women in a movie uh, that he put out a while ago. And that movie was entitled, What Women Want. In the movie, Gibson played a marketing executive who had a rather negative and stereotypical view of women. However, a freak accident changed his whole perspective when he found himself able to read the thoughts of women. Being able to get inside the heads and the minds of every woman he met helped him advance his career and it also gained certain advantage. The movie was humorous, but, but the idea of men trying to understand what women want is a very serious situation. It lies at the root of millions of dysfunctional relationships. As frustrated women conclude, he just does not understand me or he does not know or have even the faintest clue as to what I want. Well, what do women want? Thousands of articles have been written on the subject, but the women's want list seems to depend upon the nature of the subject and who's doing the asking. For example, an article in a woman's magazine uh, not long ago listed the following as some of the most wanted qualities women seek in a relationship. This article said that women want a man who is interesting to talk to. They want a man who is clean. They want a man who is well-groomed with a sense of humor. Women want a man who listen to them when they talk. They want a man who also projects an air of self-confidence. Women want a man who has a flair for conversation with decent social skills and a fair degree of intelligence. They want a man who is passionate about something, halfway decent to look upon, is in reasonably good shape, and they also want a man who is drug free. He doesn't need a lot of money, but it wouldn't hurt at all. A religious preference would be a plus, as long as he is not too religious. However, if he drives a fancy car, and if he has a valid gold car with an unlimited fund thing to match, and if he's in uh, the category of being someone who is good-looking, single, and sexy, then all of the other qualifications will then be rendered unnecessary. But you know what, my beloved, no one really knows what women want. Even women seem confused about what women want. The feminists say women want the right to choose. Pro-lifers say women want the right of an unborn baby to be protected. One group said women want professional careers in which they can advance themselves in the economic arena. And another group said women want to raise families nurture children, and love their husbands. Everyone seems to be an expert on the subject of what women want. But what about black women? What do black women want? What has been the history 
one might ask of black women. Have they been successful in getting a few of their wants while securing their needs? Well, while black women may differ about what they want, the history of the African-American woman's struggle had been one that has revealed that historically, the black woman has always wanted to love and to be loved, to care for and to be cared for, to protect and to be protected, to live respectfully and to be also respected. And at the center of her struggle for self-determination, the black woman still wants parity in the eyes of those who see her, those who work with her, and those who would dare embrace her. What is certain, my beloved, is that no human will ever know what a woman wants, even women themselves. But while none of us may know, while you may not know, while I may not know, God knows. God knows about each and every one of his creatures, large and small. He knows us better, I would dare say, than we know ourselves. When we are tempted to forget whom we are and whose we are, he reminds us, does he not, that we are his children and we have been bought with a price. Believing women have found that faith in God has minimized their want list in life. It is an attitude that helps them to truly say the Lord is my shepherd. And because the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. What do believing women want from life? Well, many have come to say in the words of the old Negro spiritual, you can have all of this world, just give me Jesus. And as Christians, we may not understand each other's wants and needs, but while we may not understand, God does. And so I desire to be blessed by him, for in him, everything we want, in him, everything we need, can and will become a reality. So our text focuses in, as we look at our exposition today, upon an appeal to see Jesus by the Greeks one day in Jerusalem. In the Passion Week, just prior to the crucifixion, an account is given of the Greek men and their wives who were among the proselytes to the Jewish faith. By name, the Greeks of this text are not called. There had been considerable speculation, however, about their identity. What is known is that they were probably Gentiles who wanted to know more about the Jewish faith. They worshiped with the Jews. But because they were uncircumcised, they were not allowed to participate in the Jewish Passover. And after the crucifixion and the establishment of the church, we don't hear much about them, except when their women started to complain. Sound like the black church. Sound like the black Baptist church. Sound like St. John Baptist Church. But we didn't hear much about them except when their women started to complain. And so we'll find in Acts 6 it is recorded that the Greek women began complaining. They complained that they were not being treated fairly. They said the Jewish women and the Africans were receiving an unequal portion of the shared community resources. Uh, they wanted fair treatment. And when they appealed to the apostles, they decided to appoint seven men to serve as deacons over the Greek affairs. 
handle the complaints of the women and as much as possible to give the women what they wanted. Help me somebody. And so in Jerusalem, however, what the Greeks wanted was not position, was not fame, was not honor, but they wanted to see Jesus. And so they met with Philip and made it known, we want, Brother Philip, we want to see Jesus. They wanted more than just to see him. No doubt they had seen Jesus as he walked along the streets. No doubt they had seen Jesus as he had been surrounded by crowds of men and of women. Their request to see him was not just to look upon him, but also to meet and to have a conversation with him. They wanted to see him, and after having seen him, they would never ever be the same. Well, you know, the African-American woman has struggled for generations on what I call two fronts. She has struggled, number one, as a black American, and then number two, she has struggled also as a black woman. The quest of the black woman has reached several levels, among them being number one, the quest for parity. We'll find that women want to be treated equally. Our history, my brothers and my sisters, is wrought with examples of black women. Black women who have shouldered two burdens, blackness and womanhood. And while the world sought equality for the white woman, it forgot about the black woman. And this point was brought out by Sojourner Truth in 1851 at a woman's convention in Akron, Ohio. Sojourner Truth said, that man over there says that woman needs to be helped in the carriages. That man over there says that women need to be lifted over ditches. That man over there says women have to have the best place everywhere. But nobody ever helps me into a carriage. Nobody ever helps me over model puddles. Nobody ever gives me the best of anything. Ain't I a woman? Look at me. Look at my arm. I have plowed and I have planted. Look at my arm. I have gathered into bombs and no man could hit me. And ain't I a woman? I could work as much, eat as much as a man when I could get it and I could bear the lash as well. And ain't I a woman? I have borne 13 children, seen most of all of them sold off into slavery. And when I cried out with my mother's grief, nobody heard me but Jesus. And ain't I a woman? And so the African-American woman fighting two battles, one for equality, wants parity. She wants to be equal before the law both as an African-American and also as a woman. And when we leave as male, when we leave as female, when they come to Jesus, they come he are because he offers them parity. There are no pre-divine differences that establish superior or inferior classes in the Lord. Christianity offers no race. It offers no sexual distinction. Galatians got that straight. Galatians 3.28 says, There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For ye are all one in Christ Jesus. And so the Christian black woman who seeks equality begin with the full knowledge that with respect to her relationship with God, neither race nor her sex 
matters. Grace is not apportioned by sex. Grace is not apportioned by race. Salvation is not reserved for any special class. Everyone enjoys parity and equality before God. And so we've just looked at women want, and black women want the quest for parity. They also want the quest for opportunity. My beloved women want equal opportunity. It's not an unfair request. It's not an unreasonable request for anyone to want the opportunity to work and to serve in the capacity that best represents their talents, best represents their skills. And African American women more so than black men have been given limited opportunity in a historical perspective. Black women worked as domestics when black men were not able to get a job. Black women worked as house slaves when their men were relegated to the fields. And so the quest for opportunity extended to a variety of areas, but has seldom come without a struggle. And so this quest is best represented by the indefatigable service of Mary McLeod Bethune. She began a school in 1904, a school to teach black girls educational skills. She led marches and campaigns for the African American woman's right to vote in the 1920s, even when African American men were being denied the right to vote themselves. And so she defied Mary Clyde Bethune did, the Ku Klux Klan, and she rode a bicycle from house to house. And she raised enough money to pay the poll tax so that blacks could vote, and then taught them the answers to tough questions designed to stop them from being able to vote. She wanted opportunity. My beloved, when believers come to Jesus, they too want opportunity. It's what happened when a woman came to Jesus, I'm told, one day with an alabaster box filled with fine oil, when she proceeded to serve him by anointing his feet with oil, Judas began to complain. He complained and said that this woman was being wasteful. He said the woman was using her resources unwisely because if you sold that same oil, it can be used to feed the hungry. What the women wanted was an opportunity to serve Jesus by giving the best that she had to give him. Jesus rebuked Judas, you'll recall, and allowed the woman to serve. The opportunity to serve as a member of the family of God is not restrictive, but is open to all. And if women want opportunity, then Jesus offers them exactly what they want. And so now we want to look at the quest for respect. That's what women want to. Women want respect. That was the theme of a popular song by Aretha Franklin that sold millions of copies not long ago and is still sung today. R-E-S-P-E-C-T, that's about 40 or 50 years ago. But despite her strength, despite her beauty, despite her intrinsic power, black women have found it difficult to get respect. Zara Hurston in her book, their eyes were watching God, pointed a picture of a grandmother who wanted her grandchildren, and especially her granddaughter, to achieve what she would call the high ground, reaching a level of living that would bring her respect. And so she kept her granddaughter away from men who would not respect her, would lead her away from 
what grandmama called the high ground. The high ground has been elusive for black women. Slave masters used them at will. Black men neglected them and society has ignored them. And even today, as we celebrate the first black vice president of the United States in the history of America, black women endure still the stinging insult of a generation of men who think it's hubris to refer to them as garden tools. They call them hoes or female dogs, the B word, I ain't gonna say that. But despite her best efforts, the black woman still craves just a little of what Aretha Franklin sang about. She craves just a little bit of respect. Women who came to Jesus found out, my beloved, that despite their race or social status, Jesus treated them with respect. Jesus treated them with dignity. A woman who had a bad reputation, I'm told, one day in the community, who had been caught in the very act with bought before Jesus. She was the lowest of the low in social status. Yet Jesus looked at her and he treated her with respect. He told her, look, I love you. He told her, I forgive you. He told her, go and sin no more. Women who want to see Jesus for the same reason men want to see him. They want to see Jesus for the same, 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 exact same reason that uh, uh, everybody wants to see him, men included. Women and men both want to see Jesus because he treats every soul with the same level of importance and everyone gets respect. Finally, 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 my brothers and my sisters, uh, while most men don't have the slightest idea of what women want, I know a man who knows exactly just what women want. God knows what women want, but he also knows what men want. He knows what we say we want, but he also knows what we really want. Psalm 139 says, O Lord, thou hast searched me and known me. Thou knowest my damn sitting and mine uprising. Thou understandest my thoughts from afar. He knows what we are going to think before we think it. He knows what we are going to say before we say it. He knows just what we want. And that's what the women at the well found out. He told me who I was. But he told me what I wanted. He told me what I needed, and that was the living water. And so I ran through the streets talking about, come see a man who had just told me all that I ever did. A woman who was a widow woman said, all I wanted was just enough meal in my bowel in order to feed my family and make it another day. But the Lord touched her little bowel and that woman to tell you, when Jesus got in the mix, it never ran dry. Well, I don't know about you, my beloved, but I'm glad to know that God knows when our bowel runs dry. I'm glad to know that God knows when all of us, you and I, men and women included, need a little help. A woman with an issue of blood one day said, all I want is to just touch the hem of his garment. And when she touched the hem of his garment, guess what? The Bible says she became whole. Well, guess what, my beloved? God is still in the garment business. And just one touch makes it everything all right. And no wonder the songwriter says, shackled by a heavy burden, neath the load of guilt and shame. Then the hand of Jesus touched me and now, because he touched me, I'm no longer the same. It goes on to say, he touched me. Oh, he touched me. And oh, the joy that floods my soul. It says something happened. And now I know he touched me. 
And after he touched me, Lord have mercy, he made me whole. Well, when you ask God for something, my beloved, always be prepared for an answer. And if he decides to answer your prayer, you may get more than what you ask for. Oh, talk to me, my Bible. My Bible tells me one day Elijah asked God to receive his sacrifice with fire. But the fire consumed the sacrifice. And not only that, but it began to lick up the water. Oh, Lord, Elijah found out when you talk to God, sometimes you'll get more than you ask for. Solomon asked God for wisdom. He received wisdom, riches, fame, and also 1,000 women. He got more than he asked for. Come on, talk to me some more Bible. My Bible say one day a lame man asked the apostles for silver and for some gold. But they looked and responded unto him, silver and gold have we none. But such have I, give I unto thee. When the lame man walked away, he found out he had gotten more than he wanted. And he got more than he asked for. When you ask God for rain, my beloved, you better get your umbrellas and get your boots ready. Because you might get more than you ask for. When you ask for showers of blessings, get ready. You might get more than you ask for. What women want is a man who can overcome adversity. What women want is a man who's able to keep his word. When Jesus died out on Calvary, I'm told that they buried him in a borrowed tomb. I'm also told that early Sunday morning, after Jesus had died on Friday, after he had slept on Friday night, after he slept on Saturday, and most of the night, uh, Saturday night, I'm told that early Sunday morning, the women came to the grave site. What they wanted was to embalm the body of their Lord, but they got more than they asked for. For what they found was not only an empty tomb, they found out that even though he had slept on Friday and on Saturday and most of the night, Saturday night, they found out that when they went to the garden alone, what they realized was that early Sunday morning, early, early, early Sunday morning, he had gotten up from that grave and when he got up from the grave, he said, I got all power. Not some power, but I got all power, both of heaven and earth, in the palm of my hand. They got more than they asked for. My beloved Jesus told me to tell you today, if you want something from the Lord, tell him. Jesus is on the main line. Just tell him what you want. Call him up, call him up, call him up, call him up. Tell him what you want. That's why I hear Bob Hinton sing in the bell chorus, I, I come to the garden alone while the dew is still on the roses and the voice I hear falling on my ear, the Son of God discloses and he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me that I am his own and the joy we share Yet we tarry there, none other has ever known. I don't know about you, my beloved, but I know what women want. I know what men want. I know what women need, and I know what men need. I know what you need, and, and I know what I need. Uh, oh, you can have the world and have it all you want. But just give me Jesus, uh, and as long as I got Jesus, uh, that's enough. What women want, they want the rose of Sharon. What do women want, they want the lily of the valley. What 
the women want? They want a closer walk with the bright and the morning star. What do the women want? They want Jesus, uh, Mary's baby. Uh, they want Jesus, the rose of Sharon, the lily of the valley, and the bright and the morning star. They want Jesus, uh, a doctor in a sick room, and a lawyer in a courtroom. They, they want Jesus, who is a friend who stick closer than a brother. What do women want, Reverend? They want Jesus, uh, a bridge over troubled water. They want Jesus, uh, a shelter in a time of storm. They want Jesus, uh, a way maker, a burden bearer. They want Jesus, who is a heart fixer and a mind regulator. I, I don't know what you want, but I want Jesus, uh, my Mary baby's child. Uh, I want Jesus. Uh, one day he picked me up and he turned me around and one day he patted my feet on some solid ground and one day he put some running in my feet and one day he put some clapping in my hands and one day, hey, uh, he started joy bells uh, and they started ringing in my soul. Uh, what do you want? Uh, Woman, what do you want? Man, what do you want? I want Jesus. Uh, as long as I got Jesus, uh, everything going to be all right. Uh, come on, somebody. Uh, has the Lord been good to you? Uh, has he been a way maker for you? Uh, a burden bearer? Uh, a heart fixer? Uh, and a mind regulator? Uh, go on, give God some praise. Uh, give God some glory. Uh, what women want, uh, what we all want, uh, what we all need uh, is a closer walk with Jesus. Uh, ain't he all right? Uh, has he ever done anything for you? Uh, has he ever healed your body? Uh, won't he walk with you? Uh, won't he talk with you? Uh, go on, praise the Lord. Uh, give God praise. Uh, go on, praise the Lord. Uh, give God glory. Uh, go on, praise the Lord. Uh, he's all right. Uh, he's all right in the morning. Uh, he's all right in the noonday. Uh, he's all right uh, in the midnight hour. Uh, I heard, uh, yeah, somebody. Uh, I heard, uh, and I thought uh, uh, the president was going to take a text the other day. Uh, when I heard him say my favorite text, uh, weeping uh, might endure for a night, uh, but a whole on uh, and a whole out uh, because we got joy. Uh, I say we got joy. Uh, I say we got Jesus joy. Uh, and it's coming in the morning. Uh, and he's all right. Uh, go on, praise the Lord. Uh, give him praise. Uh, give him glory. Uh, he's all right. Uh, God bless you. And may heaven smile upon you. Now pray for one another. Pray for our new president and vice president. Pray for our nation. Pray for our world. President said to us, help is on the way. And I believe it is. Praise the Lord. And we're going to be all right. We'll get through this. Because we got Jesus. And as long as we got Jesus, I thank you. That's enough. God bless you. Heaven smile upon you. Don't forget now. Wash your hands, wear your mask, social distance, six feet one from another, you know, and uh, pray for me and I'll pray for you. God bless you and may heaven smile upon you. Next week, I'm going to talk a little bit about the men. This week with the women, next week the men. So God bless you and heaven smile upon you. Amen. I'm pressing on. The upward way New heights I'm gaining Every day, Lord Still praying and I'm onward bound Oh, and pray Crying, oh Lord, right now let me stand, my faith on heaven, table and a higher pain, oh, you know I'm fine, oh, and pain, yeah, yeah, oh,
Lord. Lord, right now let me stand. My faith on heaven. Table land. A higher plane. Yeah, you know I found. Well, then, pet. Yeah. Oh, crying, oh Lord, oh Lord, I'm not worried, and I am not afraid, I know you do, just what you said, you said if I go, you go with me, when I open my mouth, you said that I'll speak for you, crying, oh, Lord, oh, Lord, oh, Lord, hey, 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 hey Lord, well, then, pet, yeah, 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 crying, oh, God told Moses on the mountain top, take off your shoes. This is holy ground. Crying, oh Lord, oh Lord, oh Lord, hey, hey, hey Lord. Well, and pain map, yeah. One more time. Well, okay, hold on. Right now, let me stand. My faith on heaven. Table land. A higher praise. Yeah, you know I found. 